Can we start with the global risk uh, that we have? Ukraine, Russia are at war, and the world, along with the U.S. and U.K., uh, are grappling with that. Jean-Francois, is now a moment where you're seeing any reverberations in terms of advertising spend, any consequence at all uh, across the business? Uh, not for the time being. Um, we are going to be growing at about plus 40% in Q1, uh, reflecting the fact that the company is uh, getting back to 2019 level uh, pretty quickly. Um, having mm -hmm. said that, we decided to exit Russia back in 2020, so almost two years ago. Our exposure to Ukraine is quite small, only 0.1% of uh, revenues. Uh, having said that, there is no doubt that, that the impact on the economy will be felt across all industries, including the advertising industry. Mm. But we are geographically very diversified. We have 40 plus percent of our revenues coming outside of Europe. Dubai is a good example. I mean, in Dubai, despite the fact that you're still 40 percent in terms of eyeballs in the airport, our revenues last year in Q4 were at the same level as 2019, reflecting the less mobility restrictions in Dubai, right. reflecting the and the well, World Expo. So that's that's the beauty of, of, of our geographic di diversification. Yeah. Well, Jean-Francois, you, you, you talk about, you know, the risk uh, more generally of a slowdown. I wonder how you're thinking about quantifying the impact of an economic slowdown brought on by the war, given that the range of outcomes is so wide at this point. We tend to outperform GDP growth in terms of top line uh, growth. So if there is a, a GDP contraction, there is no doubt that the advertising business will be hit. Um, advertising depends very much on, on consumer demand and uh, people might be tempted to uh, save money rather than spend money. So it's hard to quantify at this stage. But in the past, pre-COVID, when the economy was growing at about 3%, we were delivering around a four plus percent uh, growth. Bearing in mind that out of home is a growth media, especially because of the di digitization, which, uh, which is um, growing very uh, strongly. Um, we are about 30% of our revenues now, nearly 30% are digital. Uh, London is a good example. Uh, we are in the UK alone, 70% of our revenues is digital. So we con continue to convert the best advertising locations to digital. We launched a mm -hmm. trading, um, programmatic trading platform um, about three years ago, which also is starting to deliver very good revenues um, in terms of um, programmatic trading, which is the bulk of online advertising revenue. So the impact of, um, of uh, we, will be felt, but at this time, impossible to quantify. Jean-Francois, you've counseled many leaders of many businesses through many crises. Um, every, everything that, that, that you've lived through. When you talk to industry leaders at the moment, CEOs, they're going to come to you for counsel. You're going to talk to them about the advertising world, what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. As you talk to your biggest clients now, what is your piece of advice? You say Internet Manus is one of my biggest divisions. Will they react differently to Louis Vuitton, to Christian Dior, to Volvo? Talk us through the counsel to segments. Um, obviously, during the, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, and especially when the, uh, the um, uh, lockdowns were introduced uh, all over the world, with more than half of the population in lockdown, the cancellations or ask for um, um, clients asking for to move their campaigns, postpone their campaigns, because at the beginning, it was felt that that um, the world would be back to normal in, in, in July or in the summer of 2020, if you remember. It was across all categories um, that we had cancellations because we are delivering eyeballs. When most of the eyeballs are stuck at home, obviously our business is severely mm. affected. We were one of the most affected industries with a revenue decline of 40% in, in 2020. Um, but that, having said that, our biggest category is uh, luxury, fashion and personal care. This is now about 15% mm. of our revenues. Uh, driven may, also by uh, China, mainly by China. Um, right. Consumer demand in China is, is, is very strong. We're back to, um, to uh, pre-COVID uh, advertising revenue in Guangzhou and Shanghai because of a very strong okay. domestic air traffic recovery. So um, internet is on the rise, 60 plus percent advertising spent. So I, 
we are talking to all these so, uh, companies all the time. So given this uncertain environment, it's been an uncertain one for a while. Back at the start of the pandemic, you had sc scrapped your 2019 dividend. Yet again, you're proposing not a dividend for 2022. Jean-Francois, what will it take you to get the confidence to go ahead and start to distribute to shareholders again? The reason why uh, we are not paying any dividends is uh, very simple. Um, the industry is uh, facing a consolidation phase right now. We're number one worldwide, but we expect some companies to be sold, uh, companies which have um, too much debt. And we want to keep maximum uh, financial flexibility. Uh, we raised a bond that was very successful. 90% of our debt is on fixed rate. So we are um, in a financially in a very strong position. And most investors who are buying the core stock are buying a growth stock. So the story is about growth rather than dividend. Having said that, oh, we obviously we will resume the dividends when, when we feel that um, there are no longer um, enough um, opportunities to uh, grow externally, I mean by acquisition. Um, so that's why we want to keep the firepower in order to be able to further consolidate our industry, Jean which Francois, is still very quickly, fragmented. Are, are, you looking, number one. are you looking at more M&A right now? Are you looking at more opportunities in this moment? Yes, we do. We do all the time. I remember um, two years ago, we acquired a, a significant stake in the number one street furniture advertising company in, in China called Clear Media. Um, so we divested Russia, but we invested in China. So we are constantly looking at opportunities. The, our industry is still fragmented and uh, we want to consolidate our, our global position. And that's why we okay. decided not to uh, distribute a dividend for in, uh, in 2022 for 2021. You sound like a man that's that's ready to get your next deal your next deal done in size. Where where do you believe the next evolution of growth is for you? Where do you want to buy? Is it China? Is it Latin America? Is it core Europe? Where where does your sense of future lie? I mean, core Europe is certainly an area we're looking at. Uh, South America as well, um, <clears throat> because both in both uh, regions um, there is still. Uh, local players, uh, which would enhance our footprint uh, tremendously. And at the same time, we are also very much focused on uh, driving the digitalization, uh, meaning that uh, we're investing a lot in data, we're investing a lot in this uh, trading platform as well. Um, because again, two thirds more than and now in the UK, it's about 90% of our online advertising spend is being bought programmatically, which is only a fraction of our revenues for the time being. Which is mm. why, I mean, we feel that it's uh, quite important to keep the firepower dry. Having said that, also, we, we are, again, 66% uh, family owned. So we have a long term um, view on the business. With, uh, we've been in business for more than 57 years. Um, and we want to, again, consolidate the industry and, and have a critical mass uh, almost in every single region around the world. Having said that, we make some arbitrage, like Russia two years ago, which we decided to exit. But there are, there are a lot of opportunities right now. And um, we want to take uh, advantage of the situation where we have a very strong balance sheet and we can leverage our balance sheet in order to uh, make some uh, uh, creative acquisitions.